Hey YouTube, it's Ambix Zero with another video tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to crack a program that authenticates itself using your hardware ID against an online database. Okay, and what that means is, as protection, some programs generate a hardware ID, uh, a number specific to your computer, meaning it's very unlikely that any other computer running the same algorithm will get this uh, number. So, there's an online text file that contains a whole bunch of these numbers and the program will check and see if your number is in there and if it's not it will close and if it is it will let you use the program coders do this just to um, control who can use their program like if it's a paid program they don't want anyone else using it so famous massacre from hackforums.net coded this crack me um, that's just a program where the purpose is specifically to crack it so nothing illegal going on here just to let you know so let's take a look at the crack me and see what it's doing Press run. This assembly is protected by an unregistered version of e whatever uh, .NET Reactor. .NET Reactor is a uh, packer, meaning it makes it almost impossible to reverse the code and get the source code back. That's one way we could crack this: is decompile it, edit the code, and recompile it. But because it's packed, uh, we can't do that. There are unpackers, but the ones I tried didn't work, so we're gonna have to find a different way. Validating, please wait. Okay, so what it's going to do when I press OK is check to see if my hardware ID is in this online text file. And if it is, we can use the program, and if it's not, it's going to say access denied or something like that. Now, obviously, this I'm not going to be in that text file because I'm showing you how to hack it. Error, access not granted. Okay, so let's try and figure out exactly what happened. I'm going to open up a packet sniffer called Wireshark, which just monitors traffic uh, on my computer so that we can see exactly what's happening uh, on the internet. So I opened up Wireshark, let's start crackme.exe. Press run, unregistered. Wireshark is currently running bad news, bro. You got caught self-destructing. Okay, what that means is it has anti-Wireshark. It checks to see if Wireshark.exe is running, and if it is, it closes. There's two ways around that. One, rename Wireshark.exe to something else. So that, obviously, you can't see Wireshark.exe running. Two is to open Wireshark after the program has already checked to see if it's running. I'm going to do it that way. Crackme.exe, run, OK. OK, we didn't get this far before, which means it has already checked to see if Wireshark.exe is running. Obviously, it wasn't, so now we can open it because it's not checking anymore. OK, now select your network adapter. I use a wireless card, so look for something that sends some packets. Here we go. Press Start. And now it's going to start recording all my internet traffic. And we're going to press OK. Now, remember I said it's looking online for its hex file, which means it's using HTTP protocols. So we can filter for that. So we can get all this other crap out of the way. Error access not granted. OK, now let's see exactly what happened. HTTP. And we can also stop recording now. So I'm going to press this stop button. So we made a request to famousmassacre slash elite.txt at the destination 64.62.181.46. That's a ripway.com uh, address. That's just a free hosting website if you don't know what ripway is. Um, so we went to this text file and then we got a response. The source is from the same thing that the destination was uh, coming into us. So let's right click this. Let's see, it's a text slash plane. Right click. Follow TCP stream. So here's what we got. We have the hardware ID of a few different people here. If we were in this, the program would have ran just fine. But we weren't. So what we have to do is find a way to make the program think that we're in this text file. You could either hack his Ripway account, which I'm not really sure how you would do. Two, decompile the program and remove the check, but we can't do that because it's packed. So now we have to find a different way to do this. And because we can't decompile it, we don't know how he's getting our hardware ID. Luckily, we if you know a decent amount, um, and this is really advanced, you know by looking at this number that this is just a processor ID, um, meaning it's a very public hardware ID grabber source that he used. He didn't code his own, he used one um, that's well known. It's just your processor ID. So we're going to quit out of Wireshark, we already know what's going on. And I have this hardware ID generator right here that grabs our process ID. I'm going to press run, get hardware ID. 
and there we go. Now this won't work with all programs, it just happens to work here because he used a public uh, generator. So I'm going to press new text file, let's save this for later. Okay, so now we have our hardware ID uh, in a text file. Now look at it, it, it looks very similar to the ones that were in there. So um, we know that this is how it's generating it. But we don't know, we have a general idea. So now we have our hardware ID, or what we are pretty sure is our hardware ID, and we know we can't hack the web server, uh, just because hacking a Ripway account would be very hard to do without getting a virus onto the coder's computer, and we can't decompile the program. So we're left with an interesting problem. If we could somehow spoof the response from the server, we could do this which sounds ridiculous, but there is a program called Fiddler which injects into the, uh, the DLL that deals with networking in Windows so we can actually spoof the response. So we're going to open up Fiddler. However, crackme.exe also has anti-Fiddler, so let's do the same thing we did before. Press OK. And here we go, we can now open Fiddler. Go to networking, Fiddler 2. Okay, now Fiddler is a pretty complicated program, so you you might not understand all that's going on right now, but I'm going to put a download uh, link in the description for Fiddler, and after you install it, it will link you to a whole bunch of really helpful training videos, and I really recommend that you watch them. So now Fiddler is recording on all processes, as it says down here. Now what we want to do is pause on every response so that we can edit it. So go to Rules automatic breakpoints and after responses click that so that means it will break on every response not break as in crash break as in uh, all debugging programs meaning to pause so then what we can do is in the inspector in the text view area we will be able to edit the response so let's go ahead and let the crack me do its thing press ok let's copy our hardware ID for now and we should see the get response in this window right here. Uh, they will show up as one item here. Okay, here we go. See this little pause? That means that it is paused. And we will go to text view, and here's the text file. And we have to do this kind of fast because there is a timeout limit. Uh, paste it. We don't actually have to write this, but I'm going to write it anyway just in case it does an XML format. And press run to completion. Access granted. Press OK. Uh, mm, it, we should have closed Fiddler first. It says bad news, bro. You got yourself caught again. All we had to do was close Fiddler before we pressed OK. Sorry about that, I forgot about it. But we did crack the program, we got access granted. Um, all it said after that was to PM him with the PIN number. And that is how you crack a program with a uh, online database. Uh, I'm Ambic Zeros, uh, subscribe, comment, all that. I'll see you guys in the next video.